Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Many boa constrictor keepers have a lot of anxiety over the possibility that they might be bitten by their pet boa constrictor. Today I'm going to talk all about boa bites, why boas bite, what to do if you're bitten, and how to avoid being bitten in the first place. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity, so if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe. One of the most common questions I get asked is if I've ever been bitten, and the answer is of course. I mean, pretty much anybody that keeps boa constrictors, especially, you know, numbers of them, for any length of time is eventually going to get bitten. It's kind of like when you have a dog or cat, eventually its teeth are going to make contact with your skin. Dogs and cats, of course, are going to bite you playfully, and it's just something that you have to kind of be prepared for as part of a pet owner. So I've been bitten by boas, you know, quite often, um, probably more than I'd like to admit. The vast, vast majority of times, it's really no big deal at all. It's, you know, a little, just a minor abrasion that heals up and it's pretty much gone within a week or even less. Most boa keepers have some war stories about the worst bite that they've ever had. And fortunately, I haven't had any real serious bites. My animals aren't capable physically of producing any kind of really serious bites. I did have one bad bite from my Guiana True Red Tail where she struck out and mouth wide open and it was almost more like getting punched with an open mouth rather than a bite. So it, you know, it left a series of little tiny you know, pinprick type wounds and there was some bruising. But other than that, the vast majority of the bites I've received have just been basically like a little minor scratch. So if you do keep a lot of boas, chances are you're gonna be bitten and chances are it's gonna be no big deal at all. There's really two main types of bites that you can receive from your pet boa constrictor. The first is called a defensive bite. And this is what people usually think about. You have an animal that's scared or aggressive like this little baby uh, Peruvian boa constrictor who luckily missed me. But when animal, when baby, when, when red tails are babies, they need to survive. So they're gonna be defensive and they're gonna strike at whatever. This is, you know, an example of the defensive bite. And it's pretty predictable. I know this animal is a defensive biter. I have her at arm's length, so I'm not getting bitten. Um, it's, you know, generally not that hard to deal with. There are some adults exhibit this behavior, and if you have an adult boa with this behavior, you can pretty much get a feel for how it behaves, understand its personality, and try to avoid being bitten. You can see my, I'm getting a little bit uh, freaked out now with this boa striking at me, but you know, it's fine and I'll, it's all good. Um, the vast majority of adult boas and most of the babies are not defensive biters. They're calm and docile, and generally people don't get bitten from a defensive bite, but it's what most people think about when they think about boa constrictor bites. So obviously you should be aware if your boa is defensive and if it might bite you defensively. The second type of bite is far more common and that's called a feeding bite. So basically it's a bite when the boa is expecting to get fed and it misreads your intentions. You might go and pick up your boa to handle it, but the boa for whatever reason picks up a cue that food is on the way and then it bites your hand thinking it's food. And this happens very frequently. So the most obvious way that this happens is if your hand smells like food, if you've been handling rodents or even working around the mouse cages and you stick your hand in there, the snake thinks it smells like food, bam, you're gonna get bitten. Okay, snakes are highly olfactory. You know, of course they smell with their tongue. And if your hand smells like a rodent, the snake is gonna think it's a rodent. Also, snakes do respond somewhat to movement when they think there's food. That's a cue that it might be something that it's going to eat a prey item. So if your hand is moving around in the cage and happens to smell like a rodent, chances are you're gonna get bitten, even by the most docile animals. So this is a uh, Branchia columbia boa. And this animal is perfectly docile. It would never hiss or bite or anything like that. But if I took, took my hand dipped it in the rat cage and then stuck it in the uh, enclosure, chances are I'm gonna get bitten. These types of bites happen often with people who have large collections and they're doing their routine weekly maintenance chores and they're hurrying along and just, you know, scooping stuff out of the cage, changing water dishes, things like that. 
and they don't notice they're putting their hand right in front of the snake and a few times I've been bitten this way basically I'm just doing the routine maintenance and I'm a little careless because I'm kind of hurrying and you know the snakes are generally not at all aggressive so once in a while I'll get tagged so if you pay close attention and don't get distracted you're less likely to get bitten by your snake due to an accidental type of feeding bite of course a major way that people get bitten this way is by feeding really carelessly and I'm amazed by the number of videos I've seen of people just dangling rodents with their bare hands in front of a snake. I've even seen videos with people dangling in rabbits in front of a reticulated python, which is really, really a bad idea. So I would highly recommend to always use some kind of a tool to offer your food to your snake. So I use this little grabber tool and you can see it's got about three feet between my hand and the food. I can just pick up the food and dangle it in front of the snake and it provides a lot of space between the snake's teeth and my hand so I don't accidentally get bitten. You can also get tweezers and hemostats and forceps and all kinds of different tools but make sure you pick up some type of tool in order to feed your snake because the snake just has to miss the rodent by you know half an inch and it might end up biting your hand if your hand is too close. So you always want to be careful when feeding your snake. When you're done feeding, you should carefully wash your hands to remove the smell of any rodents before you handle your snakes again. And so there's a common question I get about whether it makes sense to remove your boa from its normal enclosure and put it in a separate enclosure to feed it. And there's this misconception that this will somehow condition your snake only to bite for food when it's in this you know, uh, secondary enclosure outside of its main enclosure and this is really not true and you don't want to do this for a number of reasons the first is it's probably not going to prevent your snake from biting in the first place because when you go to pick it up to feed it in this uh, secondary enclosure it's probably going to smell the rodent because you've already got the rodent ready to feed it so it's going to be kind of psyched up to get food and you might end up getting bitten the second main reason is that after the snake is done in the secondary enclosure, you're going to have to pick it up and put it back in the main enclosure. And you don't want to handle your snakes after they eat for about a day or two just to make sure that they don't regurgitate. And I've never fed my snakes in a secondary enclosure. It's really not necessary and again I wouldn't recommend that you do this. Another good practice to avoid being bitten is to announce your intentions to your snake before you take it out to handle. So it's often a good idea to use a snake stick or some other tool to kind of gently tap the snake kind of close to its tail before you pick the snake up. You can even just pick the snake up by the tail away from the head and most snakes will go out of the feeding mode and into the handling mode when you just basically communicate it to them in that way. So those tips work for docile snakes, but what if you have an aggressive snake that just doesn't calm down? Well, there are a lot of guys on the Discovery Channel and on Animal Planet, and they've made a career out of drawing attention to themselves, handling aggressive snakes and other aggressive animals. And some of these guys, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, but they're portrayed almost as superheroes. You know, what really what they're doing, they're just reading the snake's behavior. And snakes are relatively simple animals as far as their behavior. It's pretty easy to read the signs that a snake might bite you and to avoid being bitten. Every snake has its own personality, even the aggressive ones. So if you know the individual personality of your snake, you'll be able to better read its intentions and thus avoid being bitten. And the cardinal rule when handling a snake is to stay out of its strike zone. So there's only a certain amount of space around a snake's head that it's able to strike. And this is the trick that these guys on Animal Planet use in order not to get bitten by a king cobra or whatever animal they're handling. But you always want to hold the head away and you use tools if necessary to make sure that the head is not in a position where it can bite. And of course this is a docile animal so this one isn't going to bite me. But if I was handling an aggressive animal I would use a snake stick or snake hook to hold the posterior or the front third of its body and then you can kind of hold the back with your hand. But you just basically want to keep the head away from where it can bite you. 
And if you see these guys on TV, they're always paying attention to where the snake's head is because that, of course, is the business end. And they're always manipulating the snake and shifting its body so it's not able to get the head into biting position. And as long as they have uh, undivided attention, they're not going to be in any danger. So you always want to pay attention to where your snake's head is and manipulate it so that it can't get into biting position. So what happens if you do get bitten by your boa? Well, let's first talk about a boa's mouth. A boa's mouth has two rows of teeth on the top jaw and one row of teeth on the bottom jaw. So an adult boa can have over a hundred teeth and the teeth are very sharp and they kind of curve backwards, kind of pointing back to the back of the mouth. So when a boa bites its prey item, the prey item can't escape very easily. And so when a boa bites you, two things can happen. It can release right away, which is what usually happens. And if that is the case, it typically will leave a series of small puncture wounds. You can even see sometimes the outline of its upper and lower jaws. But sometimes the boa won't release. In fact, sometimes the boa will constrict. So if that is the case, you have to be calm. So don't, whatever you do, pull your hand away or try to pull your hand out of the boa's mouth because of course these recurved teeth will dig in and cause some lacerations. So you stay calm. Boas will typically release when they see it's not food. You know, sometimes you'll have to manipulate the boa to get it to release. With the smaller boa, you just typically have these series of superficial little puncture wounds. When you're talking about a large boa, which has a lot more mass, often the force of the head striking you will leave bruising. And the bruise will typically get worse for a few days. You'll have this black and blue with these little puncture wounds. And of course, everybody, all your friends and people at work are gonna ask you what happened. You may or may not wanna talk, tell them you got bit by a boa, depending on the situation. But the vast majority of times, it's, it'll just be a relatively superficial wound. So of course, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna wash it with soap and warm water and thoroughly disinfect the wound it's always a good idea to put some topical antibiotic cream on the wound because snakes have very dirty mouths and you want to reduce the chances that it's going to get infected. If you are bitten by a large snake and or you pull your hand away, it might create some more serious lacerations. In really severe cases, stitches might be required. So if you have a really bad wound, make sure you go to a doctor or emergency room and have them do stitches if necessary. Of course, with all but the very, very largest boas, this is highly unlikely to happen. The vast majority of bites are just a very minor abrasion, which heals up within about a week or so. Often when a boa bites, the teeth might break off and you might have to pull teeth out of the wound. One question I get a lot is, you know, when you pull the teeth out of the snake's mouth, do they grow back? And yes, fortunately, boas can regrow their teeth. So if you do happen to have the boa's teeth come off in the wound, don't feel so bad about your snake because he'll be just fine and regrow the teeth. But make sure that you pull them out with tweezers before treating the wound and before putting a bandage over the wound. What if you're unlucky enough to have your boa not let go after it bites? And this does happen occasionally. The boa just thinks it's food. It doesn't get the message that you're not food and it just holds on. So if this is the case, a few things that you can do. The first is to get a bucket of water and you want to dip your entire hand with the snake in the water. The snake of course isn't going to be able to breathe and it's going to let go eventually, hopefully within a minute or so. Another option is to use a little spray bottle that you fill with whiskey or some other kind of hard liquor. And so basically you spray the liquor in the snake's mouth and the taste of the liquor causes the snake to let go. It's also good that the hard liquor is 40% alcohol, which will maybe have an effect on disinfecting the wound. I've never actually tried this. I've heard from people that this does work if you have this little spray bottle of whiskey. When you're handling a big snake, anything bigger than six or eight feet, you should never do this alone. You should always have someone as backup so that in case the snake does bite and wrap, you'll have someone to help you out. Of course, this is pretty unlikely. And if you're, you can read the body language and behavior of your snakes, 
this really shouldn't be an issue. Uh, this is you know, kind of a worst case scenario in case you do find yourself in the unfortunate position of having a large boa or other constrictor bite and wrap around your arm. And this isn't something that's ever happened to me. To conclude this video, I want to say that Boa bites are relatively uncommon if you pay attention and you know how to read your boa's body language, and typically the consequences are relatively minor. If you are bitten by your boa, I hope this video has given you some ideas about things that you can change in terms of how you interact with your snake to hopefully avoid being bitten again. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out for me. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your boas.